Hey everybody, I've had so many people reach out to me that either want to try the Mendy headband or already have it, but don't have a good training strategy to get the best out of this amazing technology. So what we're going to do in this video is break down my training strategy in a five part tutorial where you'll learn the best techniques to improve your focus, problem solving skills, and meditation techniques by only doing 10 minutes a day of neurofeedback training using the Mendy. So I've been doing Mendy headband neurofeedback training every morning for about two months. And I thought it was a good time to use my Navy doctor training to boil that down into a protocol for you based on data from peer reviewed studies, my neurofeedback experience, my meditation training, so you can get the most benefit as quickly as possible from using this technology. And make sure to stick towards the end of this video where I will be very specific about the skills that you can expect to gain over the next couple of months when you're using this neurofeedback system. The first and one of the more important things that we should talk about with this device is the calibration. Now, Mendy is a continuous wave functional near infrared spectroscopy device that has lasers in it that shines harmless red light through your scalp, your skull, into your cortex of the frontal lobe of your brain. Now, that light will bounce back to the sensors in the Mendy, and the Mendy will be able to determine how much blood is oxygenated or deoxygenated. Now, if you think about neuronal activity, neurons consume oxygen. So the measurement of oxygen levels in this area of the brain is an indirect measure of how much those neurons are working. Now the calibration is especially important in continuous wave f nearest because it needs to set a baseline and then all the data points that you get after that are relative measures between the baseline and the new measurement. So I think that's why I tend to get my best scores first thing in the morning. If I wake up, brush my teeth, but then quickly get into the Mendy exercise, my frontal lobe is still waking up. It's still sort of coming online for the day. And with the calibration, I'll sit down and basically just do a soft focus. I'm not trying to do anything in particular. In fact, the less focus, the better in the calibration because it'll lead to better scores during the exercise. There's no need to do any counting or other thinking during the calibration to try to beat the algorithm. You wanna get a baseline of the least amount of focus possible so that when you are doing the Mendy exercise and your frontal lobe starts waking up and focusing on that ball, you're gonna get big increases in neuronal activity. Preparation starts the night before by setting up my space and making sure that Mendy is charged for the next morning. I also tend to set out my clothes the night before so I don't have to make any decisions when I get out of bed in the morning. Most days I'm up at 5.15 a.m., I brush my teeth, use the bathroom, and then settle right into the neurofeedback exercise. I notice that even if I just do 10 minutes of neurofeedback training with the Mendy first thing in the morning, it significantly changes my brain state. I then take that brain state into meditation for 10 to 20 minutes after the neurofeedback exercise and then go to the gym or on a run. Then after my exercise, I'll come back, eat breakfast, shower, and start the workday. So we've talked about calibration and how to fit this 10 minute training into your morning routine, but what should you actually do during the neurofeedback session? Should you focus on the ball? Should you zoom out? Should you do breathing techniques? There's all these things that you can do, but the question is, should you do them? At this point, it's pretty well established that most of the effects from neurofeedback training are subconscious through a process called operant conditioning. You're watching the screen, you're getting rewarded by increasing scores, you've got those little stars that ping when the ball goes up, and your brain is learning that that's a positive reward, so it's gonna shape your neural circuits to get more of that reward, meaning that it's going to activate your frontal lobe more to get that ball to go up. On a microscopic level, those neurons are building connections, and one of the ways that they do that is through a neurochemical called dopamine that I'm sure you're familiar with. Dopamine is being released by the presynaptic to the postsynaptic neuron, and those connections get strengthened as a result. What's interesting is this 2017 review paper on neurofeedback found that if you introduce too many strategies early on, it can actually be detrimental to the patient or the client making progress in the neurofeedback training. So what I recommend is that just be present with the screen. Don't try to do too much, especially within the first couple of weeks of training. The one thing that you can do that you can take an active role in is feel the excitement when the ball goes up and you get those stars 
because what that does is strengthen the dopamine connection. See, rather than taking an active cognitive strategy on the surface, I want you to pay attention to your emotions. Get happy when the stars go up. Get happy when the scores go up. Um, those things will strengthen the connections and further your neurofeedback training. And what I found is after three weeks of training, I could actually stimulate by just by feeling good and imagining I was getting stars in my mind that I could actually have the ball go up from that. Simply from the emotion and the visualization of getting stars, the screen seems to respond to that quite well after several weeks of training. Keep in mind that there's about a five second delay between what your neurons are actually doing and the blood flow response. So it might not happen immediately and there will be a five second lag, but it should respond after a couple of weeks of training. So to recap so far, when you calibrate, do a soft, relaxed focus. And then when you're doing neurofeedback, training, again, a soft, relaxed focus, but practice the emotion and feel the excitement when you do get positive rewards to reinforce the operant conditioning that's happening as your frontal lobe is activating more, consuming more oxygen, and building those neuronal connections in your frontal lobe. And part 2.5 of this video is if you found this information to be helpful to you, please give a thumbs up to this video and subscribe to the channel to help with the YouTube algorithm so that more people get exposed to this content. With your support for this channel, I can continue working with the most interesting, innovative, and groundbreaking companies in the world for neuroscience to bring you even better content in the near future, and I really appreciate it. Okay, so let's talk about your overall training strategy. Cole E. All in this review paper took a look at 22 peer-reviewed studies on FNIR's neurofeedback and suggested that the most significant results in test subjects happened after 30 training sessions. This is probably why Mendy recommends that you train for four to eight weeks before you'll see an increase in your average neuronal activity, which is one of three parts of the Mendy performance metric. My recommendation is that you establish a routine and train every day for eight weeks before you can really expect to see an improvement in your cognitive performance. For me specifically, it took about three weeks of training every morning to start to notice this thing that I'm calling the Mendy pull effect that got me really excited to continue my training long term. It was when I started to notice this pull effect, this Mendy pull effect, that I started to understand this neurofeedback training regimen a lot better and how it can be implemented in your daily routine. Basically, after 10 minutes of neurofeedback training, what I notice is that it's a lot easier for me to maintain my attention on a given space, whether that be externally or internally. It was easier to maintain my attention just because I was drawn to that space. It really can be used as a primer. A good example would be my heart center where I was practicing gratitude exercises. It's as if my attention was just pulled into that center area of my chest if that's where I wanted it. It made the meditation more easy and enjoyable because I think I'm getting dopamine bursts when I'm focusing my attention like that after neuro neurofeedback training. And I'm not sure exactly what neural architecture allows that to happen, but that's what I've been experiencing. And then what I realized is that you can take that and get better into flow state, whether you are doing weightlifting, running long distance, or working at thereafter, I was much less likely to get distracted and be able to do those activities more efficiently and with better results. So this is the type of environment where I love to use that Mendy pull effect because if I do my neurofeedback training and create that effect, I can use it to create a flow state through my meditation exercise and into my long distance running. I notice that here my brain is aligned in that common goal of covering ground and it creates both physical and mental efficiency. What I notice is if I check my phone too much to take pictures or change songs to listen to music, I lose that mental efficiency and my endurance goes down I actually become more tired so the goal is to create this flow state that you can carry through in activities like this so how can you expect many training of your frontal lobe to actually affect your everyday life well we know that the frontal lobe is highly involved in something called executive function in this review article Adele Diamond talked about executive function in four different cognitive domains there's self-control selective attention 
working memory, and cognitive flexibility. You can imagine how attention and self-control are very valuable in your daily life, but also with cognitive flexibility. The ability to see problems from different angles and problem solve has to be one of the most important skills we have as humans. In fact, children that had higher executive function skills were shown to be more prepared for school than other children that even had higher IQs or higher entry-level math skills. So you can imagine how that prepares you for the world. So in my last video, I shared some really personal and vulnerable details about how Mendy has improved my life. And I really appreciate everybody's comments and questions. You guys are so awesome as a community and I really appreciate you. If you haven't seen that video yet and you wanna see how it affected me on a very personal level, click the link here for this video and I'll see you on the other side.